Decals are pre-made 2D images that you can place directly onto the surface of a 3D model without having to think too much about it. I understand that it might seem a bit silly, due to how simple that sounds. But if you have ever tried to add an image to a specific part of a 3D model, you know it can be a bit of a headache. And it usually requires using texturing programs or building a giant node tree in a software such as Blender or similar software. But with decals, you can think of it as a sticker that you can easily drag and drop as a one and done deal. And you can do this exactly where you want them to be, without having to copy the pattern all over the place as it is the case with regular materials. So decals serve as a way to add details, and also variation or specific visual element that is typically used to achieve a higher level of photorealism to an environment, stylistic choice or imperfections to a scene. For example, all leaks or cracks, logos, blood, splatters, whether in effects, and honestly, anything you can think of. It is also important to note that when you place them on a surface, it is possible to adjust the size, opacity, and other attributes that make a model appear more realistic, such as the reflections, normals, metalness, blending nodes, and so on. Besides, when you start moving them around, you will automatically adapt to the angle, geometry, and position of the objects that it is attached to. But how and where you can use decals? Some might be asking, what's the point of doing this? Because you can just make a regular texture instead. Well, not really. The whole idea of decals is how easy they are to add to a surface because it is not exactly smooth sailing with the alternatives, which would be either creating the details with sculpting or modeling, and this will require adding more geometry and lowering the performance, as well as requiring an advanced level to finish the task. Or you can add them onto a model's texture in software such as Substance Painter. But then you might lose resolution, and this would definitely take longer. On a technical level, decals usually need to be projected onto a surface that they are placed on where the 2D image UV coordinates are assigned to vertices of the 3D object by using the model's UVs to ensure proper texture placement, but how do you do that in the first place? The answer depends on the software that you are using, with many popular techniques and methodologies that unfortunately I can't go through in this video, but if I have to pick one, I will go with view space projection. While it is not popular as some other techniques, such as screen space decals, I think it can be the best example since it is the simplest in my opinion. Essentially, in view space projection, each decal exists in the scene as a simple mesh, usually as a plane or a cube, and it uses what is called a fragment shader, which looks at the word position of whatever is behind it, along with the position and size of the decal itself to figure out what part of the decal's texture should appear, and the ability to adapt to your model's surface geometry thanks to their texture coordinates. I know it does sound a bit complex, and it is even deeper than that, but I hope it helps you understand the gist of it. In theory, any 2D image can be used as a decal, no matter where it came from, but usually, artists in the 3D industry use 3D software such as Photoshop to edit real-life images and drawings, or with the help of software such as Substance Designer, which is a procedural texture generation software. This helps you create textures with the help of nodes. The particularity of this approach is how it can generate different iterations of the same texture, which would add more variety to the environment. And nowadays, AI texture generation models like Midjourney and Playground can also be very solid alternatives for making decals. Now, if you read between the lines, the true beauty of decal lies in their ability to add an exceptional level of detail to environments without affecting their performance. I mean, after all, they are just transparent images in the grand scheme of things. So if I asked you which industry these characteristics could really shine in, you would be right if you answered video game development. In modern gaming and real-time rendering, decals have grown in popularity to become an essential tool for artists and a core part of any video game development studio. While there aren't any hard analytics to back this claim, there are plenty of stories from artists in the industry that show just how powerful decals can be when it comes to video game development pipelines, and it can be a very important part of any game development workflow. One of my favorites is that of Stray, the iconic cat game I'm sure that you have seen or at least heard of. According to Maxim Dorokov, 
a 3D artist at Blue 12 Studio. In the interview he gave to GameDeveloper.com, the co-founders of the studio and the directors of the game have always been fascinated by a place that no longer exists, called the Walled City of Kowloon in Hong Kong. And each time, they examined closely out photographs of the region, and they were amazed by the unique setting it presents. The constructions almost felt organic and decorated with a density of details and complexity that sparked their imagination. For games of this nature, and for video games in general, it is a match made in heaven with decals. In Stray, similar to any AAA video game, they used the industry standard PBR pipeline which is photo-based and used procedural textures mixed with texture paint in a substitute 3D painter and even photo scans or some 3D assets to mix it all together and add rich surface details and realism that the game also known for. Decals were used to add a grungy look and just overall variety for the environment assets such as buildings, walls, floors and so on. And needless to say, the use cases of decals extended way beyond the realm of video games and it is here to serve any kind of project which needs optimization or quick way to add details whether it is real-time rendering virtual reality 3d art or just anything else in between over the years decals have made their way into every major 3d software including of course game engines such as unreal engine which I would argue push decals further into mainstream use, especially with the rise of Mega Scans, which is a collection that is free to use inside Unreal Engine. You can also find them in other commercial engines such as Unity and all of the popular DCC software such as Maya, Max, Cinema 4D, and so on. But I think the most popular one of them, especially among freelancers and 3D artists, is an add-on that goes by the name of Decal Machine, one of the most successful Blender add-ons of all time. And what's interesting is how it takes a different approach to traditional decal usage. So instead of focusing on environment details, it serves as a way to add mechanical details to 3D models without having to model every little bit by hand. Having said that, I think it is widely agreed that during our modern era, decals hold an unrivaled power that every 3D artist should have in their toolkit. But even with that, it is far from being a miraculous solution. This is the case because, while it's true that decals can be helpful for optimization, if you go overboard, it will quickly turn into a nightmare really fast, as it can really slow down your rendering, plus, they need to be of a high resolution to look good up close. It can also be tricky to apply them to complex surfaces or corners because they may not wrap correctly, and sometimes they may not always interact correctly with the dynamic lighting or shadows which can potentially cause them to look out of place or less realistic compared to the rest of the scene, as well as some other minor challenges that you can face along the way. In my experience, I find decals to be great for adding small and subtle details or things such as graffiti, but they are not ideal for larger details or areas needing a lot of texture variety. For those, I prefer painting directly in software such as Painter, as it tends to be more optimized it is important to learn when to use decals and when not to also because as they say too much of a good thing can spoil the whole barrel and there you have it guys i hope you had a little bit of a better understanding of what decals are so if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel to receive more videos like this and thank you guys for watching again and i will see you in the next one